Well, hello folks, meteorologist Michael Wilhite here with Southern Indiana Weather, bringing you this latest edition of our video forecast. Folks, we have a lot to talk about today. The potential for severe weather exists. Maybe some isolated uh, strong thunderstorms here on Tuesday, but nothing, nothing too much to worry about. Uh, Wednesday looks like a uh, big deal, and we want to dive right into the data here in just a second. Today's video update is sponsored by Metal Magic in Washington. You can give Chad a call at 698-8555 for all of your paintless tin repair needs, and tell them Southern Indiana Weather sent you. Write that number down because we may uh, end up needing them here in just a little bit. Let's start by taking a look at the Storm Prediction Center's outlooks, the SBC's outlooks. Here is the day one outlook for what to expect today. The slight risk does go extend maybe just as far here as Terre Haute, uh, just sort of into the corner of Indiana. If we hover over the probabilities, all of Indiana here, and all of southern Indiana anyway, is under a 5% risk for uh, 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 wind today, as well as hail, and then the tornado probabilities do not extend into us. So we, we do have a chance for some marginally, marginally severe winds and hail events for any of these uh, uh, storms that would pop up but let's take a look at the her model let's, this is our highest resolution model let me just run through this with you and as I move this forward in time what you see is we don't have a whole lot going on in the morning hours in fact you don't see any pop-up storms starting to fire really here until about two o'clock in the afternoon and uh, then from there it only sees out 15 hours but we're going down to you know six o'clock in the evening and you've barely got anything going on it looks like today is going to be uh, a few thunderstorms are possible but they do look more isolated in nature compared to what they did yesterday of course last night thunderstorms are very numerous and plentiful to be found took a while to be able to get that uh, thunderstorm coverage but I don't think we're going to have that same amount of coverage today now during the overnight hours I think we're definitely going to see some uh, more thunderstorm activity which we'll talk about here in just a second but uh, during the daytime today it's a pretty low chance overall so if you got plans this afternoon yeah, you may have to dodge a raindrop here and there, but uh, it's it's not going to be that bad. And I uh, isolated strong storm with this, maybe, but that is a uh, that's that's not a good bet today. It's it's a very marginal risk at best. Nothing to worry about. I'll be here tracking if there is anything. I'll post it to Facebook and Twitter and let you guys know. Now Wednesday is the day that we're really going to have to watch out for. Of course, the Storm Prediction Center has issued a slight risk for severe weather. They're actually thinking about putting a moderate risk in here somewhere, but they have not done it yet because there's still too much uncertainty, which I'll also talk about in just a second. If I hover over to the probabilistic side of it, and it looks like the page is refreshing. It does that every so often to make sure that you got the most current outlook. Let me hover over to the probabilistic here, and what you see is that we are in an upper end slight risk, 30% slight risk um, all over southern Indiana, really from points from Indianapolis all the way south. In fact, it extends here into central Kentucky as well, so this would include uh, really the whole area in that. And then you also notice this black hatched line. This is what we call the significant line. Uh, the hatched area is what you see right here. It is a 10% or greater probability of a significant severe weather within 25 miles of a point. So let's talk about what significant severe weather is. Let's go to uh, their definition and uh, let me let me pull up their definition. Um, I should have already had this done, folks, for you. Significant severe weather, though, is... Um, well, basically, significant severe weather is extremely large hail or a, a very, very, very powerful wind gust. I don't have the exact definition in front of me. Um, maybe I'll do that in a future video for you. My apologies. But uh, it is defined. But basically, whenever you see that hatched area, what you want to know is that uh, that's that's the focus of where they think the strongest of uh, probabilities are going to go. All right. So, and you see that's right over southern Indiana. All right. Now, I talked about there could be a moderate risk issued with this. Let me, let me read you some of the wording. Um, what you see is this. All severe types will be possible, including damaging wind, large hail, and tornadoes. So that's, that's comforting that all modes will be possible. Uncertainty regarding placement of boundary and impact of morning convection and outflow boundaries precludes a moderate risk upgrade at this time. However, a portion of the Ohio Valley may need to be included in a moderate risk in later outlooks. Now, let me translate that nerdy nerd talk for you down into something the average person can understand. Basically, what they're saying there is it probably does need to be upgraded to a moderate risk, but we don't know where to put the moderate risk right now. Simple as that. Um, the position of uh, the boundary and impact of the morning convection and outflow boundaries, those are technical terms, which most of you probably don't understand what is, and that's fine. But basically, they don't know exactly where those are going to be yet tomorrow morning, and so 
that's what that'll be where the moderate risk needs to be so since they don't know yet they're not going to issue a moderate risk at this time look for future outlooks though to include that moderate risk i think is what you'll see out of that all right let's time this out on future radar here as well i don't want to draw this out too much for you folks but uh, i want to give you all the details that you'll need to know here's tuesday here's where we are this afternoon and you can see actually here's even uh uh, four o'clock in the afternoon here's five and you're just now starting to see some pop-up thunderstorms potentially come up on the high res nam future radar so you can see it's not overly aggressive a few chances this afternoon but nothing too big watch this though this is a mesoscale convective complex an mcc or an mcs mesoscale convective system there's two different words you can use for it watch this dive down in here and this is exactly what they're talking about with the ongoing convection and the outflow boundaries the outflow boundaries are winds that race ahead of this line and cool the air and, and sort of act like a mini cold front for redevelopment of thunderstorms they're basically they're saying we don't know 100 percent where this is going yet because the models are differing on it every run uh, but what you can see with this particular run is that it takes it to the north of us now there's a lot of uncertainties with this uh, you can see also that it breaks it down before it gets here and then by the time the evening comes, you've got a pretty intense looking squall line. We'll come back to that squall line here in just a minute. Let me get back to that. Let me go down here first. Let me take you into this. This is another model that I can use. And um, I want to show you this as it develops. Notice how the Boeing echo is on this. You see how strong the Boeing is. This is likely a very, very severe line going on in Nebraska and Iowa and moving down into Missouri. This would be late tonight. This is uh, 3 z so this would be about let's see um that should be um eight, that should be 10 p.m all right that should be 10 p.m tonight according to this model so i have to do the math in my head and you can watch how this goes down in the future runs it doesn't look like it becomes it doesn't look like it's as severe though by the time you get into the overnight hours you see it's lost that boeing effect to it the further in time as it goes on then as it approaches our area you see here we are during the morning hours here's 7 a.m and we've got some rain going on early in the morning hours from this but as it nears us it's getting closer in in time and it's finally through it doesn't push that rain completely through until really about oh um uh, maybe 10, 11 o'clock in the morning time tomorrow uh, before that thing is completely gone and through. So a lot of uncertainty exists. If that storm complex comes a little further south, I don't think it's going to be severe at this point the way things look, but that could bring some morning cloud cover and any additional morning cloud cover we have, well, that's going to be a bad thing because, well, actually that'll be a good thing because it'll keep the severe weather chances that later in that day a little bit lower because it will limit the amount of uh, instability that we could get a little bit. Uh, if that stays a little bit further to our north as said this particular model and and moves away from us doesn't give us a whole lot of morning uh, thunderstorm development to worry about then if we don't have those clouds stick around as long we get more instability and then it could be a very 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 bad night for us so that's something we're going to have to watch for basically what we're going to have to see is tomorrow morning when it's a now casting event what's going to happen do we stay cloudy much of the day if we stay cloudy much of the day that's going to reduce the risk for severe weather we'll take it away but it will reduce it if we have sunshine most of the day, then expect a very rough night on Wednesday night at this point. All right. Severe weather parameters, by the way, are still in place. We still have a pretty solid low-level jet going on. Here's Indiana right here, and uh, the, not a whole lot has changed in this since yesterday. Uh, bulk shear product still looks good. So not only do we have a low-level jet, we, we've got uh, uh, over 50 uh, knots here of bulk shear. So that just folks, there's plenty of wind energy to work with, and um, a short, sweet, and to the point. Uh, the, the big question with this is, is going to be the instability that we have. And the NAM model wants to take us with decent instability because it doesn't leave us cloudy all morning. If it leaves us cloudy all morning, this will reduce the amount of instability. So we'll just have to see, and that's what we can say at this point. But as of right now, the models are taking this. As this system then moves out, then we've got a potentially a squall line developing here. Here's for 8 o'clock Eastern time tomorrow night, Wednesday night. And then here is 11 o'clock Eastern. So you see how quickly that squall line races through us ain't the quickest moving thing in the world but it's it's quick enough uh, and uh, it this could pack a punch with it uh, by all means so we'll have to see tornado development usually with squall lines you don't have a, a ton of tornado development but what you do is you about the top of the squall line where you have the low pressure at and at the tail end of the squall line that's where you worry about them the most at and so really up in here and down in here would be where you would worry about uh, tornadoes particularly the most but uh, we are towards that tail end here in southern in um, 
they're, they're more sparse down here. So, And really, uh, with the parameters that we've got in place, all modes are possible tomorrow. If we get any uh, storms that would fire ahead of the line, that's what we've really got to worry about. So tornadoes, that looks like a secondary threat at this point. It looks like, um, really, I, th I think damaging winds in excess of 70 miles per hour with this line would, would be found. And uh, large hail is certainly possible as well. If I take you into a, a really nerdy nerd tool here that we call Buff Kit, we're looking at a profile in the atmosphere. What I want you to see, the lines here are heights in the atmosphere. In between this red line here and this yellow line, this is what we call CAPE, Convective Available Potential Energy. And this is uh, looking at a measure of uh, the instability in the atmosphere. And what I want you to see is the instability begins very near to the ground at about maybe 5,000 feet or so, something like this. And it is available all the way up to about 43,000 feet. Uh, folks, if we can get that amount of cape tomorrow to go that tall up into the atmosphere, large hail would certainly be possible because those water droplets could be lifted up way above the freezing line. All right, the freezing line here, by the way, starts at about 15,000 feet on this model. So you're getting up into here and you get strong updrafts with the winds that we do. Those hail uh, particles, basically hail is formed whenever you have a uh, water droplet that's lifted high up into the atmosphere, then it freezes, gets heavy, and it starts to fall back down. It gets caught up in another updraft. It makes another another trip up and back down. And if you actually cut a hailstone open, you notice there are concentric circles around that. It's one concentric circle for each time. It's basically traveled up and down, up into the cloud, and then it eventually just gets too heavy. It's got to fall down. So the, if you have... Um, if you have cape that's this tall, what you run the risk for is uh, extremely large hail. So that's something that we'll be watching out for. Um, is it a guarantee? Absolutely not. And again, how much cloud cover we get in the morning will limit that potential. But it's certainly there. So really, as what I say, all modes are uh, all modes are uh, uh, in play at this point. All right. Let's go to southernindianaweather.com and we'll finish up with your seven-day forecast. Folks, again, a few thunderstorms today, more isolated than yesterday. I've given it a 40% chance, 85-year high. It's going to be not as breezy today. Breezy again tomorrow, though. Sun mixed with clouds again. That's why I'm saying, uh, do, do we say mostly cloudy? Do we say partly cloudy? I'm just going sun mixed with clouds because right now it's completely up in the air. We don't know yet, and that's something that we're going to have to watch. All right. Slight chance of those showers and thunderstorms early again. But those clear out and then the afternoon becomes rain free the way it looks right now and then we have numerous thunderstorms expected wednesday evening later in the night so strongest severe thunderstorms likely and then look at the cool down after this though the good news is thursday and friday look like pretty nice days precipitation free for the most part thursday may be an isolated shower early before everything clears out but we're going to high for around 78 you can't beat that 80 on friday with no rain chances and a partly cloudy sky you can't beat that either and then, you know, you got some rain chances after that, but certainly not uh, the continual deluge uh, that the models were wanting to say. So this is most certainly a good thing. All right, folks, we'll cut off the video for here and for now. Uh, we'll leave it here. Um, plan your day forecast, by the way, if you're just wanting to see your plan your day, just looking at your cities area-wide. Temperatures in the mid-80s area-wide, and it looks pretty good. Plan your night uh, for tonight as well. Those thunderstorms will continue. So. All right, that is it for today's video, folks. Uh, I'll have a blog update later this afternoon around lunchtime, most likely, and uh, talk about the latest and see what the morning models do. And uh, from there, uh, I don't know if I'll have another video later this evening or not, but I'll have plenty of updates. We'll put it that way. All right, take care, folks, and we'll see you later this afternoon.